Jesus, my soul loves Jesus, my soul loves Jesus, bless his name, my soul loves Jesus, my soul
up, oh Father. Uh, we give you the glory. We give you the honor and we magnify your name. Oh God, we want to thank you for how that you blessed us to have a mind to come and serve you. We have a mind to come and search you out. Have a mind to come and seek you in worship service. Oh Father, we all well. That when we come together as one, and when the room is right, when the Holy Spirit is right in the room, oh, Father, we are aware that yokes are destroyed and chains are broken, hearts are mended and healed, cancer dries up. Oh, God, we are aware that when your Spirit shows up for us, uh, that it will do mighty works. Therefore, God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor and we magnify your name. Oh God, we want to thank you for how that you've touched some of our friends and co-workers. How you've touched their bodies. They've been dealing with cancer. They've been dealing with high blood pressure. They've been dealing with diabetes. They've been dealing with other illnesses uh, that we're not able to call out now. But because we prayed uh, that your will be done, uh, oh God, we hear the testimony. We see the things. We see things demonstrated by your spirit and by your power. Oh God, we thank you that you answered our call. Uh, we thank you that you heard our prayer. We thank you that you touched him with a finger of love. Therefore, God, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we magnify your name. Oh, Father, we thank you for those that had to go to the other side. Oh, Father, we knew it was your will, but we also know that you prepared them and got them ready to receive you. Therefore, Father, we thank you that they recognized they needed to repent. We thank you that they recognized that they needed to make sure that they had things right with you. Oh, Father, we are aware that some have no idea that they need to get themselves ready to return. Oh, Father, we recognize that some think that it's just easy to say a few words uh, and to be back on your side. But, Lord, you showed us in your word. That there has to be fruit of our repentance. There has to be signs and demonstration to show that repentance took place from the heart and not just from the mouth. Oh God, we thankful. We are thankful that we are well. That we are thankful that you showed us. That we are thankful that you demonstrated that to us through your word. Therefore, God, we give you glory. We give you honor and we magnify your name. Now, Lord, we ask you right now to prepare us for this service. Oh, God, let your Holy Spirit reign in the place. Let your Holy Spirit wash us in the place. Oh, God, let your Holy Spirit come down with power and authority. Lord, we are aware that if your Holy Spirit don't show up, then there's no need of us worshiping. There's no need of us praising your name. There's no need of us calling you on your, calling your name because we need your glory. We need your power to show up in the place of uh, because your power it would do things uh, that no other power can do. You said in your word, Lord, that it's the anointing uh, that destroys uh, the yokes of bondage. It's the anointing uh, that brings change. Uh, it's the anointing uh, that sets the captives free. Uh, it's the anointing uh, that heals, delivers, and sets free. So, Lord, we here in the building. Lord, we're here in the service. We sound off the alarm. Lord, we ask you right now, let the anointing fall heavy in the place. Let it fall as you see fit. Because without your anointing, singing is in vain. Without your anointing, our prayer is in vain. Without your anointing, our greeting is in vain. Without your anointing, the word cannot be preached. It cannot be effective. So Lord, we ask you to send it down. In the mighty name of Jesus, soften up the heart that it may be able to receive the seed. Soften up the heart that we may be able to see, receive the word of God that will take root in our our heart. Uh, Lord, some of us uh, might be 
in here today uh, that have shallow ground, uh, have stony ground, uh, have rocky ground. Uh, but Lord, you can change the ground. Uh, you can change how we receive. Uh, Lord, that's why we need you uh, to come down here as never before. Uh, I feel you bubbling up in the room, God. Uh, I feel your anointing uh, softening up the hearts uh, through this prayer. Uh, so God, have your way uh, in this place. Uh, have your way uh, in our lives uh, because we can't make it without your anointing. Uh, so say yes. Uh, Lord, have your way. Uh, Lord, touch the heart. Uh, of those that have called uh, and said that they could not make it. Uh, some can't make it because of sicknesses uh, in their families. Uh, some can't make it because they had to travel uh, and go out of the state. Uh, but let them feel uh, the anointing, uh, the virtue uh, of your power uh, as it leads. Uh, the place uh, and go through the atmosphere. Uh, let it touch them uh, and let them recognize uh, that although they wasn't there uh, in person, uh, but you haven't forgot about them uh, because they feel, uh, feel your presence. Uh, they feel uh, the glory uh, that is in the place. Uh, that's the reason uh, we worship you. That's the reason uh, we magnify your name. Uh, Lord, uh, let it rest. Uh, let it rest. Uh, we talk about your Holy Spirit. Let it rest uh, upon the hearts uh, of those that are in here. Uh, touch the musicians uh, that are on their way. Uh, touch the mistress uh, who is out of the country, uh, who's in Barcelona, uh, who's in Spain uh, with his job. Uh, God, give them our mercy. Uh, Lord, help them to fly back safe. Uh, Lord, give them ground mercy. Uh, that if you walk among uh, unbelievers, uh, that they uh, can do no harm. Uh, touch it, Lord. Uh, in the mighty name. Jesus, uh, and we're going to give you the praise, uh, we're going to give you the honor, uh, we're going to magnify your name, Lord, uh, as you are touching him, touch me, uh, touch my body, uh, seem like the enemy, won't uh, attack me uh, with pain uh, that I don't understand, uh, but it's not going to slow me down, uh, it's not going to stop me, uh, because I know uh, that your is an evil uh, to come uh, to take down uh, until uh, I deliver the word. Uh, so, Lord, uh, we, your saints, uh, in the real holy temple, we are ready uh, to receive the word. Uh, we are ready uh, to receive the anointing uh, that you're going to allow uh, to take place. Uh, this place, uh, for all saints, uh, step to your feet, for all saints, uh, let's give God some glory, let's give God some honor, let's magnify the name, uh, let's usher in uh, the presence uh, of the Lord, uh, yes, uh, so say yes, uh, have your way, Jesus, uh, have your way uh, among us, uh, you said in your word.
In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, saints, and clap those hands. As a storm on life motion, and it's moving this way. Come on, if your soul not. shall be exalted. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give God a praise on this afternoon. 
Because he's been mighty and strong in power, loving towards us. Just give him another praise because he's so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I just stood this afternoon in the presence of the Lord. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, on behalf of our pastor and the shepherd of this house, Rishon McCoy, we just thank you for coming out this afternoon. Even in the rain, it didn't stop you and you came on anyhow. And I just welcome you to the service. I welcome you to the presence of the Lord. And I just welcome you to be a part of this service. And not just be here and be in the midst and be entertained, but giving God all that you have. Because there is a word from the Lord for each and every one of you. And when you pour out all that you have unto God, he will pour back into you. So I just wanted to welcome you. And it's so good to see each and every one. And if any visitors, if you'd like to stand and just say, state your name and where you're coming from, we'll be so happy to hear it from you. <laughs> and if you don't, that's okay. It's okay. I welcome you. We welcome you on behalf of Maria and Holy Temple. It is so lovely just to see your faces and have you come to fellowship with us. Didn't mean to put you on the spot, but if you wanted to just say something, I wanted to give you that space. And we just thank God for just being here today. Almighty God, we need you right now. We just ask him to reveal his glory and pour his spirit out. Constantly on your, on your heart. Just constantly keep that. Almighty God, we need you right now. Reveal your glory. I pour your spirit out. Almighty Judgment Day. 
And as you are preparing to stand before God on judgment day, you will also be prepared to deal with the day that we're living in. A lot of people don't understand the importance of making sure that you're ready to return back with the Lord. Uh, society don't believe it. Uh, there's people inside ministries that don't act like they believe it. And so uh, they're doing things, they're acting, they're acting a certain way, and don't realize the danger of playing with God as well as playing church. So I want you to know I love you and I thank you. And if you don't know, God is going to bless you. Amen. Uh, some people say, I heard that all the time. Well, just keep living. Amen. You're going to see God do something. And uh, he's going to do it because of your faithfulness and because of how that you uh, was willing to give your mind, body, and soul in serving him. Okay, so let's look at Matthew chapter 10 today. And I'm going to read uh, verses 34, 35, and 36. But I'm going to elaborate on the whole entire chapter because you got to understand where Jesus was coming from at the time that he made this statement. We've been doing this little mini-series entitled uh, The Cost of Discipleship, what it will cost you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ as well as what it will cost you to follow him. Praise the Lord. Uh, when we look here in this whole entire theme or this whole entire book of chapter 10, Walking down to verses 35, 34, 35, and 36. I want to bring you to the remembrance for you that do remember and for you that don't know. At this particular time, uh, Matthew now is walking with Jesus. If you go back into chapter 9, you'll find out that by Matthew being a tax collector, Jesus first approached him. And when Jesus approached him face to face, he says, follow me. And the text shares with us that he did follow Jesus. So the things that Matthew wrote about, uh, chapters, start with chapter 1 all the way until chapter 9, uh, some theologians is arguing this statement, and I'm just going to put it out there. They were saying that Matthew only wrote what he heard mm -hmm. as an eyewitness, but his writings of Jesus came more potent when he actually walked with Jesus side by side. Uh, the only two men, disciples, that actually have a letter uh, written in this book that actually walk with Jesus, uh, along with Peter, you're going to find it be Apostle John as well as Matthew. So now Matthew is now sharing with us uh, that Jesus is now in Galilee. He's having his ministry now. Uh, he's ministering in Galilee. Uh, Jesus uh, is now fulfilling something different than what had been prophesied. What was prophesied was that there was going to come a king that was going to come in and implement his kingdom and was going to free the Jews and, and everyone else that lived at that time, especially in Rome. He was going to free them from the Roman rules and the Roman government of that day. Uh, the Jews and those people that lived in Rome at that time was wanting the days of glory to come back, the days of David and the days of Solomon. But when Jesus came, he didn't come to change the rules and laws of their government, but he came as the ruler of the world. He came as the ruler of the universe. He came as the son of the living God. But as you reach search, if you do your research, you come to discover that they didn't want to accept him that way. Uh, they couldn't stand the fact that he was calling himself the, God, uh, the, the, the son of the living God. I believe Psalm even says that uh, they follow Moses. Well, they didn't understand that uh, Moses followed his rules by Jesus' father. Right, right. And so now Jesus is in the flesh. And he is demonstrating something that the world do not want to see. So by him claiming to be the son of the living God, he was forcing people to make a choice that they need to choose between, between believing in him and not believing in him. Uh, some chose to believe in him and some chose to reject him. So now as he is in Galilee, I want you to pay attention to this outline that I've given you. You that are on Facebook and YouTube, uh, I would, if you are interested in this 
layout that I have, uh, please call me in. The information will be on the screen. Uh, be in there, our information contact. Uh, Pastor Rayshon McCoy, Marian Holy Temple at gmail.com. Send me an email if you're interested in this information. Uh, this is a little something that may be different today, but you're going to get a bit of preaching and teaching all at the same time. Is that all right? Uh, can you give uh, Elder Doe a paper? He got one? Okay. God bless you. God bless you, Elder Doe. Um, let's look at this. In chapter 10, you're going to discover that one, Jesus is now talking to the disciples. You'll find out that he has chosen 12 men to follow him. Pay attention to this outline. You're going to see that in these disciples that Jesus are talking to, he's referring to them into three groups. You'll find that in chapter 10, verses 1 through 15, Jesus is speaking of the disciples of his day. In other words, they are right there with you at the moment. Go down to number two. You see that Jesus will talk about the disciples in the future. During the time of the great tribulation. Uh, then in number three, you'll find out that he is referring to faithful disciples who will live throughout the church history. So when we go back up here and we look at how he addressed the 12 disciples that were with him, he was more or less trying to get them to see the visual picture of what it's going to cost to walk by his side. Everybody wants to walk with Jesus. You hear them say, I want to be like Jesus, but I don't believe they know what they're asking for. Because in order to be like Jesus, it's going to cost you something in areas that, that some at the time uh, that they are receiving him might not be aware of what it's going to cost. The last time that I talked with you, I talked about over in Luke how that Jesus gave an illustration on how a man needs to count up the cost. He talked about how that a man does not build a watchtower except he sit down and calculate will he have enough money, will he have enough funds uh, to complete the job. Right. He also gave an illustration of a man at war, a man who had 10,000 soldiers, but he got to fight a man that's got 20,000 soldiers. Right. So he sits down and he calculates, is it going to cost him too much to fight this war? Yeah. It says in the illustration that he sent out an ambassador to negotiate with the one that had 20000 yeah. So what he was showing was uh, a man needs to understand what it's going to cost him right, right, yeah. to follow me who is a miracle worker. Yeah. Who is a one that will make a way out of no way. Who is one who has made a way uh, but is waiting for you to get close enough to him so he can show you the way. Is anybody praying with me? Yeah. So as we look here in this, you come to discover that Jesus, he begins to deal with these individuals. In verses 2 through 4, you'll come to notice that he gives the list and the names of the 12 apostles. Now, I'm not going to call them out, but you can go back and read it because you have a guideline that you can follow. That's what they call in the A category. In the B category, he gives instructions. He gives instructions in... Verse 1, and then he began to give instructions in verses 5 through 15 in the same chapter. Look at what he gave them. He says, uh, I'm going to give you a mission. He says, this is your mission field. They are to go only to the lost sheep of Israel. In other words, our job, as we look at it compared to the day, we that claim to be disciples of job of Christ, uh, our, one of our main jobs uh, is to go out to the lost sheep. That's in the world. Some of us got lost sheep in our family. Some of us got lost sheep in our jobs. They yeah. don't know Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so really, that's one of our obligations uh, is to go to them. Now, what will help us to draw them to the Lord uh, is that we got to live something that they can uh, want to know what makes you function like you do. Why is it that the supervisor can cut you out, make you seem less of a human being, uh, but you don't get mad? I'm teaching whether you know it or not. Uh, they, they need to see that you are able to go through adversities and go through trials and tribulations, uh, but you still show signs and evidence. I got joy while I'm going through. I'm not sad. I'm not bitter. I'm not angry because I understand the cause. Uh, following him means I got to be ridiculed, I got to be talked about, I got to be falsely accused. Yeah. Then he goes down 
And he began to say, uh, I'm putting you on the mission field, and your mission is this. Look at what he says. He says here, to preach the, that God's kingdom is near. Yeah. You'll find that in verse 7. Then he says, you need to heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out demons. Oh, my, 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 my. Uh, heal the sick, those that are sick and afflicted, those that are spiritually sick, those that are physically sick, even to the point to where those are physically dead. They might have died at a certain particular moment and with prayer and proper Things that you would do for us as doing mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation or pumping the heart to bring the blood back. You are praying. Uh, uh, it's a possibility you can raise them from 30 seconds of being dead. Uh, but not only physically death, uh, but you can help raise somebody that is spiritually dead. Yeah, yeah. Do anybody see what I see here? Oh, my, my. He says here, uh, 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 you will cast out demons. Uh, oh, my. There's a lot of people that walk around with demons in them. Uh, and we got the power of Jesus Christ. I feel something already. Uh, we got the power to speak those demons out of those folks uh, and tell that demon to go back where he came from. Oh my, 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 my. Then we see him that, let me go back to verse 7. He says, preach that God's kingdom is near. What he meant was, tell the world that Jesus is close enough. It has never been in the history of the universe. Uh, so that's the reason why come we tell people, get your soul right with the Lord and quit playing games. Uh, because you don't know when your wrath may come. Oh, wow. What you talking about, Reverend? I'm talking about the individual wrath when God takes your life and you die. If you're not here when the big rapture comes, when we're walking around and he just calls us up out of the air. Oh my, 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 we don't understand We were waiting to see the big rapture But sometimes the big rapture is when you die uh -huh. Because when you die That last breath go out of you You stand before the Father uh -huh. And when you stand before the Father And the Son and the Holy Spirit Then uh, whatever happens on that side I can't give you all the information But I can give you enough That if your soul went right before you leave uh, You're going to go to a place That you did not intend to try to go Amen is anybody praying with me? Yes. Then he goes on to say here, uh, they get, they are giving authority. He says, uh, by you cast, by you healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons. Uh, then he says, they are giving the authority to do these things. Uh, he gave them the authority to cast these spirits out. Uh -huh. yeah. Reason why these spirits can't be cast out because there ain't no spirit in you. Okay. You can't work with something that you ain't got. My grandmother said, give the Lord something to work with. What do we give him? We give him our life, our mind, body, and soul. We give him our time. That's why we spin and we tarry in the word of God. Because the word of God tells us what's on God's mind. It tells us how God operates. When we study God's word, it gives us the faith we need not to be afraid to stand before demonic spirits. That's the reason why I come. Uh, I see who the real Christians are because when you see these common Christians, uh, so-called Christians, uh, I'm telling y'all they're not saved at all because they are falling in line in agreement with what this country is endorsing, and that is same-sex marriage, the LBGT. They're in agreement with uh, abortion. They're in agreement with all this mess uh, and too scared to tell the truth because uh, some preachers believe they might get voted out of the church. Well, my brother, I'd rather get voted out of the church because I told the truth than to stay there and compromise the truth uh, and miss my seat in the kingdom of God. Oh, I hope somebody hear what I'm saying here. You this on Facebook and YouTube, I hope you understand. He goes on to say here in the because of verse 8 of chapter 10, he says here, they are to give as freely as they have received. Meaning that because God has showered blessings on us, he has showered his blessing on us, we should give generously to others. We should give them our time. We should be very generous and giving our time tarrying with them. Yeah. We should give them all the love that we have. We should give them uh, our possessions. We should love what we have so much that we're stingy with it. Amen. That we won't give it away with somebody who's in desperate need. It bothers me that people, especially in the body of Christ, claim to have so much but won't give nothing. 
There's some in the body of Christ that's very wealthy. Some have a lot to give. But I don't understand the reason why some of them can't give and have a lot is because that they are overhead, they're overhead in debt. Cars cost too much. Uh -huh. Houses cost too much. They're still living a modest lifestyle and having these things available and resources available to help the one that can't see Jesus because he's hungry. Uh -huh. He can't see Jesus because he's homeless. He can't see Jesus because he's hurting and needs you to spend some time with. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> can't get a amen. 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 He said, so, 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 so you got to show them that. Uh, be generous in your time and your love towards them. Then he says, and, and he said to remain unburdened. They are not to take money or extra clothes with them. In other words, he told them that when you go out, he says, I'm sending you out. And when you go, he says, don't take no money or extra clothes with them. Now, some people say, well, what you talking about? I got to take a little money with me. Uh, in other words, don't depend on the money in your pocket. Because when you're doing God's work, what God will do is touch people's hearts to bless you. Yes, yes, yes. You might be having to go somewhere and witness to somebody, and you might get stranded. Right. You might not be able to come back home. You might not be able to take the shower and change clothes up. Who knows that, that God may touch them to be a blessing to you? Yeah. He says, when you go into these places, he says, bless or curse each one that receives. He said, let it be known uh, who is worthy. In other words, he told him, said, when I send you into these places, he said, I'm going to send you into a place, you know what I need to do. Let me, let, let me just read this from, the, the, y'all mind if I teach a little bit. Let, let, let me read this from the Amplified Version. I, 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 you got to hear this. You, you, you got to hear this. He says um, in uh, verse 9, um, uh, according to the Amplified version, he said, "Do not take gold or silver or even copper money in your in your money belt or provision or perversion bag for your journey. Otherwise, don't take none for your journey. Or even uh, sandals or staff for the workers deserves his pay. Y'all, mm -hmm. y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Now, if a man is a pastor of a church and he's preaching and he's evangelizing and he go on places witnessing, don't you know that it's our responsibility to bless him because he's blessing us? Right, that's right, that's right. right. Amen. Right. Amen. I'm bothered about these so-called Christians who have not stayed close enough to God to be able to discern when a real prophet is in front of them and when one is fake. Right, that's right. They give all they man to a, money to a fake prophet, mm -hmm. but won't give no money to a, a real prophet. That's right. Yes. Because what a real prophet will do will expose you about the wickedness in your life. Yes. Yes. A false prophet is going to make you feel like you got it made and got it going on. Uh -huh. And so therefore, uh, they say, I've been sown into you, you should be able to sow back into me. Uh -huh. And here you are, you're giving your money, you're giving the things that you have tangible to the prophet. And when the prophecy don't come true, you don't get mad at the prophet. You question God. Right. Right. Can I get a talk back to me, too? Yeah. You question God. Why did the prophecy not come to pass? Well, who said that what that man told you was what God gave him? Right. How can I prove that? God told Jeremiah, these people are prophesying things that I didn't even tell. Uh -huh. That's true. They tell it lies to the people and I didn't even give them this word. Yeah. And all because you are not uh, aware of what the scriptures is saying. Yeah, yeah. You pray with me. Amen. So he says uh, in verse 10, uh, he says, uh, verse 11, wherever city or village you enter, ask who in it is work, who is worthy, who welcomes your message. Mm -hmm. And stay at the house until you leave the city. He says, verse 12, as you go into the house, Give it your greetings. That is, peace be to this house. Mm -hmm. If the family living in the house is worthy, wor wor is worthy welcoming you and your message, give it your blessings of peace. That is a blessing of well-being, prosperity, and the favor of God. But if it is not worthy, mm -hmm. take your blessings of peace. This is when he says, if they don't receive you, 
Shake the dust off your feet. Yeah. Woo -wee. If you want to know how much dust is on your feet, shine your shoes. Step into a dirty place, shake it off. See, this is the reason why I come. I don't mind shaking the dust off my feet when people can't receive the truth. That's the reason why I come this church is not full because people don't want the truth. Right, right. Now folks may say, well, man, well, uh, you know, they ain't got nothing to do with it. No, they ain't got a whole lot to do with it. Right. Why well, keep going to a doctor who's keep, who keep telling you a lie that you're all right, but when you go home, you're still feeling bad. Right. They give you all this medication to take, and you still feel bad. And that medication is causing problems in other places. It could be you need to change what you've been eating. It could be you need to stop smoking and drinking. It could be you need to quit running around. Because your body is so up. It could be. But you are aching because you need something to give you some energy so you can keep going and going and going. And don't you know sometimes God has allowed things to happen to you so you can sit still enough to hear him talk? I believe COVID came to what make us sit down so he can hear us talk. So we can hear him talk. We, we, I tell you, that was the best time in my Christian life where I didn't have to go nowhere but sit there and join my wife and my children and evaluate my life when everybody else was asleep. I've been studying to find no sermon. I studied because I needed something for me. Why? Because I've never seen nothing in that time period. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know what we were dealing with. Yeah. Didn't want to take the vaccine. They didn't want to do all this other stuff. And I had to trust God all the way. Yeah. And I'm still trusting Him right now. Yeah. He's now addressing them this presently with Him. But then, after he addressed them that were right there with him, and look at this, y'all, because the same thing that he was addressing to them, it is for us right now. It is our responsibility as followers of Jesus Christ to be able to understand that he is sending us out. He's sending us out uh, among these wolves uh, to witness his word uh, and to help him sound their alarm by proclaiming his gospel. But now, in this second part, he shows on your outline, he shows him that he's talking about the future disciples who will go through the times of, of great tribulation. Uh -huh. Now, the great time of tribulation is this. And I pray that we will be ready to go back in the rapture because I don't want to be here when the great tribulation comes. Uh -huh. That great tribulation here is the future time period when the Lord would complete his discipline of the nation of Israel. Now you can go back in Daniel chapter 9 and you can understand that when you read it to see what God has to do to discipline Israel before the world comes to an end. Then the second thing he says here that the time of great tribulation will be that the Lord would judge the unbelieving godless inhabitants of the earth. Meaning that God's judgment is going to be poured out, listen to this, Facebook and YouTube, on all sinful humanity, according to Revelation chapter 6, verse 16. And for you that want to do study on Revelation, you better make sure you're ready. There are certain parts of Revelation that I haven't done no in-depth study in because I'm not planning to be here. I'm planning to be raptured up. I'm not planning to be here to see one thing concerning the great tribulation. Amen. That's the reason why I'm living like Christ is returning. Amen. Because if anyone that is here after this, according to what I understand, he says, there will be no flesh that will be able to survive what's going to take place. People are going to be trying to kill themselves and God will let them die. That's how bad it's going to be. I am not planning to be here to try to witness none of that. That's the reason why I come. I'm living like I am now because when it's time for me to go, I don't have to be trying to guess where I'm going. I, I know where I'm going. Not because somebody told me you need to claim it. It's because of how I've been living. Let me stop here. That's the reason why I come. You need to hear hard preaching that will challenge your thought process and your behavior and how you do God. We all try to, to me it seems like we're trying to stop time so that we can redeem time. It seems like that we're trying to make provisions to stay here forever. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, we're getting up out of here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're going to die one way or the other. That's right. I don't know how I'm going to die, but I know I got to die one day. But I also know that there's a life after this life. Yes, yes. 
And this life here is going to prepare me whether I'm going to go to heaven or hell. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hope somebody hear what I'm saying. So he goes here and he says here, now, uh, this second group of, I'm not going to say this just, I already see this now. We'll pick it back up next week, praise the Lord. Uh, but the second group here, he's talking about, he says, these are the future disciples. He says these future disciples here, he says uh, uh, the enemies of God will hate them. Mm -hmm. He gave three categories. He says the religious persecution would take place. you find it in verses 16 and 17. 16 and 17 here, he says, according to the Amplified Version, he says, listen carefully. Disciples, he says, I'm sending you out like sheep among the wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves, having no self-serving agenda. Y'all see that? Self-serving agenda. How many preachers have a self-serving agenda? How many preachers have an agenda that you are persuading the people to believe that the agenda comes from God, but as the Bible teaches, God is not the author of confusion? So here you are here is trying to push an agenda that is confusing. I cut my hands for myself. You so worried about numbers coming in and the offering coming in and you ain't worried about the souls that are going out. And people are dying in sin thinking that they are saved and they on their way to hell with no return. Because you gave them a cheap grace Oh, I'm going back to that. Instead of a costly grace. You told them, oh, ask the Lord to forgive you, but you never put no emphasis on repentance. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. A man can't experience true repentance until he's sorry at how he has sinned against God. What you mean, Reverend? God been good to you in your trifling way. Oh my, he was good to you when you were so drunk you didn't know where you was at. You were so high you weren't even aware of your surroundings. Uh, he was good to you when you purposely tried to hurt someone uh, to try to get back. And he could have killed you. He could have killed you. He could have dropped you dead. You could be just as healthy as health can be. But you could have dropped dead on the spot because how you was torturing his people. Riding down the road, drunk, all over the place, could have had a head on collision. But God showed you I was with you when you didn't even think I was. Why? Because of the power of my grace. Oh my, what you talking about, Reverend? I'm talking about the grace that gave a man time for him to come to himself to recognize that he needed a savior. And sometimes God got to do things, Brother Eric, to let you know that you can't make it without him. He'll do things to let you know that you will never be able to live, breathe, move, have your being, except I be in the presence. Sometimes we think we're so smarter than God, especially those that are in the church. I'm going to get to it, y'all. Especially those in the church who think they're so smart that they are smart at God. Uh, to where that as long as I know the language and know the prayer and be able to use those things, uh, I'm in good shape. But let me tell you something. God can kill you in the midst of your mess. That's the reason why I'm so glad, saints, uh, that I recognize his power and what I can and cannot do in moving into him, moving towards him. He goes on to say here, he tells them, he says, uh, they will be handed over to the courts and be beaten in the synagogues. In other words, he says, these future disciples here, he says, uh, they will hand you over and think that they're doing a good thing. Look at how he described this. He says, beware of men whose nature is to act in opposition to God. For they will hand you over to the courts and they will flog you in their synagogues and you will be bought before the governors, the kings for my sake as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, do not worry about how, what, how or what you are to say for what you are to say will be given to you within the very hour, within the very minute for it is not your speaking but the spirit of the Holy Ghost, your Father speaking through you. In other words, let me tell you something. 
Let me just give you a little tidbit of what's going to take place. All of us real Christians that are pushing back on our government and how they are legalizing same-sex marriage and abortion and allowing same-sex couples to be able to adopt a baby and a newborn, but a man and a woman that is married, they can't have children. They put them on the back burner and tell them we want you to adopt teenagers. All because those nasty LGBT people have an agenda is trying to turn out the baby. And as the church stand before them, as the church stand in their face and push back, we might be put in front of the government. We might get killed while we are protesting. That might happen before we leave here. But to show you an example, Jesus told them how they needed to respond. He said, you ain't got to say one thing because the spirit of me that's working through you will give the answer that you need at the very moment. And let me tell you something. If you ain't got him on the inside, you will not be able to give the right answer. That's right. He says, if you deny me before me, and I deny you before your father, which is in heaven. Now you think about this. You got to make a decision in following him that it means if I have to walk off my job, thank God I work for myself. Oh my, I'm not, I'm not doubting nobody that work for somebody else, but I just want to show you something. Uh, if you are on a job to where they are trying to make you call a man a woman because he decided to change his gender, or a woman who decides to change her gender from a woman to a man. And if you don't call them by their proper pronouns, uh, they will terminate you. The question is, uh, will you be willing to leave? Amen. Amen. You make $100,000, $200,000 a year, $65,000, $70,000 a year. But what is it worth? Amen. See, I, 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 I'm understanding. I'm understanding that there are some critical thinking that got to take place. Yeah. Because people, especially the school system now, has got to be careful at how they call a child. You know, they, they, you know they're trying to pass a law now that when a baby is born, that the parent can't put on the birth certificate, that they are a boy or girl. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's taking place. They're trying to do that. And the, pre, and, the, and the real preachers and the real leaders that are pushing back against that, we don't know what it might cost us. Right. You see, I, I, I got to say this because it's got to be something for you to think about. Mm -hmm. See, when you deny who Jesus really is yeah. and where he come from, yeah. see, he died to save all these people. Yeah. He died to heal them, deliver them, and set them free. Yeah. And if you are not willing to give that message to them uh, that they can receive deliverance, because believe it or not, so many people don't want to be that way. Society and science has gotten them to believe that they were born that way. The devil is a lie. Ain't no way in the world God made that kind of mistake. He made it right with Adam and Eve. He made it right with male and female. It's these demons out here. It's these demons in these religious positions that have connected themselves with the world and telling the world what the real church is saying. I got to get out of here same time. I, I, I'm about to explode. They're the ones that's between the world and the real church. Let me tell you the reason why I'm saying it is because the world ain't paying attention to what we're preaching on Facebook. That's right. That's right. That's true. That's true. That's true. The world got mad at Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. who exposed Beyonce's song when she took the song from some righteous sisters and changed the lyrics. And let me tell you something. He exposed it, but it was the religious people that put the fire to it. Yeah. Brad, who are you talking about the religious people? The ones that ain't really saved? Uh -huh. Who have the form of godliness but have no power? Who wants to have part of their hand in the world and in the church at the same time? Uh -huh. Yeah, those are the religious people. And we got preachers. We got people in government of positions that because they are deacons in the church and judges in the church. And, and all these other political figures in the church claiming to be Christians, you ain't saved. Let me tell you right now, I'm the first one to tell you on Facebook and YouTube, if you don't want to hear me, turn me on. I don't care. You are a child of the devil. What you are. Because at the end of the day, you're the reason why I come the world can't see Jesus uh, because of your cloudiness. Yeah. Amen. 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 Come on now. 
Religious persecution is going to take place. Political persecution is going to take place. Oh my, he says it. You're going to go before uh, the governors. You're going to go before kings. Then he says uh, family persecution is going to take place. Your family members uh, will betray each other. Look at what he says. Brother will betray brother to death. And father his child. And children will rise up and rebel against their parents. And cause them to be put to death. Can't you see that now? Look at how our government is giving the privilege for our children uh, to divorce their parents. Uh huh. Child can't get whooped no more by the rod of correction except they call social service. And social service wants to separate the child. But let me tell you something. I'm glad my children is grown, but I did just house. But they ain't dead. I, I, they got whips on them, but they but they weren't bruises. I didn't break no bones. I, I didn't give no concussions. I, I didn't do none of that. Now, I, I, some of us maybe have witnessed that, uh, but at the same time, we still live it. Yes, sir. If you think about it, some of us needed that hard hit in the head anyway to become the reality because our parents used to say, I bought you in this world, I'll take you out. They didn't play that, but what call this modern day teaching, the modern day parents now is, I'm going to put it in town, I'm going to put it over in the corner. You better lay the right hand of fellowship on them. You better lay, lay it on them in the name of Jesus. And let them understand and know that you are going to be productive citizens for society. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to end it and then I'm going to go come back next week. I, I, I work in Wake County Correctional, Wake County Jail. Where I cut all the inmates that have been locked up in this county. Mm -hmm. And you know what's so sad to see a 19, 8, 17, 18, and 19 year old young man. Who is locked up in now because he wants to feel that he's somebody that he ain't. Mm -hmm. Put an 18 year old in a room with a 40, 50, 60 year old man who is hard. Mm -hmm. It'll scare the life out of him. And he got there because of his disobedience. See, the Bible teaches, if you don't believe it, you can look at it in the Old Testament, that a disobedient child does not live out his days. See, you think that the world is killing your child, but your child is dying because they can't be obedient to sound instruction. If the mothers and the fathers can't raise them to be productive citizens, then give them to somebody who can raise them. Instead of trying to use the system of social services and, and all these food stamps, instead of trying to use the kids, so I'm talking to you young women who wants to go to the nail shop. Uh -huh. Go put all this weed in. Amen. You want to look glamorous, but your child is running wild. Yes, sir. Yes, children sir. raising children. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you should have never, never got in a situation where you had to have sex. Amen. I know this might be hard talking, but let me tell you something. That's the reason why we got so much mess going on. These people in the system feel like that the system owed them something, but they've been terrorized in the street. So they feel like they got privileges. You got to do this for me. Yeah. Ain't nobody got to do nothing but hold you hostage until the judge give you your sentence. That's it. Because you bought this on yourself. It all comes because of the spirit of the vision. Has took place. Yes. Okay? And I'm going to show you next week, praise the Lord, it's 3 o'clock. Now I'm going to show you next week what we're talking about if I get to it. Boy, is this, is, is, is this good teaching to y'all? It's, yeah. yeah. it's raining outside and it's falling and stuff. We're going to get out of here in a few seconds because I got to drive to Burlington, but I just needed to talk this out. Yeah. I needed for you to see from God's word. Uh, that it's going to cost us if we claim to be disciples. We not, might not be the twelve that was hand chosen, but we still are disciples. And because we got a responsibility, and the responsibility is to make sure that we have everybody that we come in contact with that don't know who Jesus is, to make them be aware that the kingdom of God is here right now. Last thing here, he says uh, in verse 23, he says, let's go back to verse 22. Now, I'm reading this from the Amplified Version. Now, you can go read it from the King James, but I'm breaking it down from the Amplified. He said, and when you, he said, and you will be hated by everyone because of your association with me. 
but it is the one who has patiently preserved and endured to the end that will be saved. In other words, Jesus was telling them, they're going to hate you because they hate me. And because they're hating me, if you can just patiently endure the persecution. Don't sit there and whine about it. If you endure, he says, you will be saved. Did y'all follow this so far? We'll pick this back up Sunday. I can't wait to get back here. I wish tomorrow was Sunday so I can finish this off. Saints of God, this is the beginning of what I want you to understand and see. Today was not a day of hollering and hooping. That day is going to come, trust me, because I felt like going in a while ago. But I couldn't do it because God has assigned me to get you to help you to understand and see. As we go through and study the word of God, you need to know why certain things are happening. See, Jesus, he already knew what the end was going to be. He knew this. He knew it. But the disciples had no clue. And he needed them to understand. When you look at some of the things that he talked about, and I, I, I'm, I'm asking you all, I'm begging you all, to go back and follow this behind me. I am not one of those preachers that will tell you, don't follow behind me. I need you to follow behind me. I really need you to do so. Because I don't have the intentions of leading you wrong. But I could miss something because I'm human too. It could be something that you got a question about. I might be able to help you. I got the resources to help find you. But what I don't want to do is have y'all emotional junkies shout at the drop of a hat, walk out empty, and cannot fight the enemy. You can't fight it. You can't fight it because you ain't got nothing to fight with. See, because you cannot rightly divide the word of truth. Brother Tyler, you can come on with the offering. Precious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for blessing us in the first part of this Matthew chapter 10. Showing us what Jesus was sharing about what it would cost to follow him. Lord, help us to go back and read, evaluate. Let us go back and see ourselves. And Lord, and if we see that we are not true disciples, the way that you are challenging us to be, Lord, move in us right now. And the Lord, move on us right now, God. Go in and prepare us. Build us up, God. And get us in position to where we can do the kingdom work until it's time for us to exit out here. Lord, we thank you for our visitors today. We thank you for the saints that are here today. Lord, we thank you for our musicians and how they come through the storm and rain. Lord, we thank you that you blessed us to come through the storm and rain today. So, Lord, we ask that you would keep us, guide us. Remember Sister Jones' family. Remember her father, who they called the family in. Lord, help them to go through. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you will continue to bless the Owens family. Brother Owens is in New York. A place that he's never been. But Lord, bless them that they will be able to come back safely. Bless Brother Demetrius, who is in another country. He's touring another country, working with his job. Lord, touch him and bless him. Give him the wisdom to be able to discern the danger that is around him. Until he's able to come back. Lord, bless Brother Stephon and Sister Child, wherever they are. And bless these guys that are here presently right now. And God, we give you the glory and honor and praise. Now, Lord, as we prepare to lift our offerings, saints, you may stand up. As we are prepared to give back to you a portion of what you blessed us with. We just want to thank you, Father. Thank you, God. That you've given us place of employment. Oh, Father, we thank you that you blessed us to be in the work with a clear conscience. We thank you, Father, that we are able to give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. Lord, you only ask for 10% and a free will offer. So, Lord, we thank you that we are giving it with joy. We're giving it with gladness. And, Lord, as the ministry receives these gifts, God, I ask that you would give us administrators wisdom 
knowledge on how to disperse these blessings. Oh, Father, we don't want to waste. We don't want to waste what you have blessed us to have. Some people, some ministries have their own intention. But, Father, we want to have your intention on how to disperse these things. God, you can take a little and bless it to be a lot. And so, Lord, this belongs to you. It don't belong to me, the pastor. It don't belong to the families. It don't belong to the administrators. But, God, this is your gifts that you are asking us to bring back. And you will increase it. Lord, I ask that you increase the saints. Lord, increase them that gave in these offerings to be a blessing to me as their leader. Lord, bless them as you see fit. Lord, it might not be money, but it can be longevity. Lord, it might not be money, but it can be favor that you would give to each person in here. Because we understand favor comes different than anything else. Favor is not fat. Favor will show up with no money is there. Favor will show up when there's no ability through the credit bureau. But God, we understand how you operate. So God, therefore, we thank you. Oh God, we thank you for the favor. For the favor that goes beyond material good. God, we ask that you would do it. And Lord, when we depart, let us not forget what's been called to our attention today. And help us to study this when we have time alone with you. Bless us in the storm. Give us road mercy. Don't let anything, wildlife, drunk drivers, road rage come in contact with us. But give us the mercy and the favor to do the thing that you have designed for us to do this day. And we give you glory. We give you the honor. And we magnify your name. We give you the glory, Lord. We give you the honor. And we magnify your name. We give you glory. And honor. We magnify your name. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we magnify your name because of your goodness, your mercy, and your long suffering. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. We give you glory. We magnify your name, bless you, Elder Lord. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we magnify your name for your goodness and your mercy, your kindness and your long suffering. We give you glory. And we magnify your name. Yes, we thank you. Come on, we thank you. Yes, we thank you. Thank you, God. Yes, we thank you. Yeah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Let the church say it. Give him your 